she was here today. I haven't seen y'all in a while. Everybody doing all right? Good, good. Now I have a confession. Uh, I've been extremely busy and uh, I would have been here a year last month Y'all heard me preach already, so I was going to do like a good pastor and start recycling the sermons from the first one that got here today. But the Lord impressed upon my heart another message that uh, I will be preaching from sticky notes that I got a little while ago uh, because of my. Uh, Fighting to be in a good place. And I can't uh, stand up here with a manufactured message uh, when I'm dealing with God. Because I feel you don't benefit from it either uh, if I'm not authentic to God. So I choose to be authentic to God today. Um, I want to call your attention to Psalm 137. Those of you that might be wondering if this is a recycler, you know it's brand new. Amen. And I have specific instructions not to move too much. I'm going to try to stay right here at this podium today. Psalm 137. I'm reading from the New King James Version. And it reads as such. By the rivers of Babylon, there we sat down. Yea, we wept when we remembered Zion. We hung our harps upon the willows in the midst of it. For there those who carried us away captive asked of us a song. And those who plundered us requested mirth, saying, Sing us one of the songs of Zion. Verse 4, How shall we sing the Lord's song? in a foreign land. If I forget you, O Jerusalem, let my right hand forget its skill. If I do not remember you, let my tongue cling to the roof of my mouth. If I do not exalt Jerusalem above my chief joy. I want to talk from the thought today. Hold on to your song. Hold on to your song. Why would I encourage us today to hold on to our song? Because there's a lot that transpires in life, and some of which is out of our control. It's been a rough year for us all in terms of January to July. But it's been a rough year for me Although a rewarding year from June to July. Nonetheless, I'm encouraged to uh, hold on to my song. When one weeps, when one cries, we shed tears. Uh, because we are Emotionally responding to some type of loss or situation that has dimensions of physical, cognitive, behavioral, social, culture, spiritual, and philosophical reaction. Just this month, I've had 20 counseling sessions, and in some shape, form, or fashion, I encouraged those 20 to hold on to their song. With regards to our text today, during the year 587, as Jeremiah had warned, the Babylonians were conquered 
from Jerusalem. And during this conquer, conquering moment, the city was destroyed and most of the people were taken into captivity. The people of Israel or Jerusalem were experiencing a time of grief and distress. It is no secret our nation has experienced a time of grief and distress for many, many years. But it was the deaths of George Floyd, Ahmaud Arbery, Breonna Taylor, and many others that have sparked the consciousness of America, that have sparked the consciousness of our world to take a stand in the dark. We are living in a time of grief and distress. While I hasten to encourage us to fight for all lives, don't get distracted when you hear the term black lives. We can't take care of the whole if we don't take care of one. And no, this is not a message specifically on black lives, but this is about grief and distress. Why? Because all of us have encountered grief and distress in some point of our lives. And we have not always known how to deal with the grief and the distress. Some of us get into drunken stupors. Some of us are overcome by depression. Some of us are over anxious. Some of us resort to drugs. Others elicit sex. And the list goes on. But the best way to deal with your grief and your distress is to call on Jesus. Amen. Because he can deal with our grief and our distress better than we can. When we look at the text by the rivers of Babylon, there we sat down, yea, we wept. And we remember Zion. Their minds went back, went back home, went back to that place of worship unto God. Now I don't know about many of you, but sometimes it's hard to reflect on the goodness of the Lord when life seems to be against you. When you've been taken captive, when you are battling depression, when you are battling grief, when you are battling distress, it's not as easy to turn our face in the direction of the one who can give us our strength. But here in the text, regardless to being taken into captivity, they cried, but they remember. Yeah. And I hope you all get that message today. Whatever your situation may be, you may sorrow and shed a few tears, but don't forget to remember. The text says they hung their harps upon the willows in the midst of it for they are those who carried us away captive and asked of us a song. And those who plundered us requested mirth, saying, Sing us one of the songs of Zion. Everybody's not going to understand your grief. Everybody's not going to understand your sorrow. And just because folks open their mouth and ask how can I help her seem concerned about your situation. I almost said something. 
Don't lose sight of God's presence. Mm -hmm. Being in a position of grief and distress is also a moment of vulnerability. And no, you cannot be vulnerable with everybody that comes to your rescue. But if you cast your cares upon him, yeah. the Bible says that he will care for you. These two verses that I've read describe grief. And they didn't feel like sin. Because their songs represented rejoicing. Represented victory, represented deliverance, and they were not experiencing any of the three. For the Bible tells us that they were taken into captivity and they were weeping. But while they were weeping, they remembered Zion. And those who had taken them captive wanted to mock and make fun of their faith. But when you find yourself vulnerable, when you find yourself weak, you also need to find your strength in remembering. See? Because when you remember what God was able to do for you over here, mm. he's able to do the same thing for you right here. And watch this. It may not look like the deliverance may not look like how he delivered you over here. But don't be discouraged because he's still in the saving business. Mm -hmm. For there are those who carried us away captive asked of us a song. And those who plundered us requested mirth saying, sing us one of the songs of Zion. Sometimes people request stuff of you in your distress and in your grief. And in the back of your mind, you ask yourself and them, why? Why do you want me to do this? What is the benefit for me? What is the benefit of you receiving this in my time of distress and in my time of grief? You know what you did to me. But you want me to act and serve as if I'm still in Zion. No, you're not going to get what I would give my God in a strange land. Because what you want, what you're asking for, you're asking for the wrong reason. And while I may be weeping in the midst of my captivity, my friends let me tell you, don't forget to remember. Verse 4. How shall we sing the Lord's song in a foreign land? Now everybody in here may not be able to sing. I'm not that good. But I got a hum. Some of y'all got a shower voice <laughs> or riding in your car voice or sitting at my desk groove and I say this with love but if you ever been in church and they have a male choir you know the men can't sing <laughs> but together they make a melody. How can we sing the Lord's song in a foreign language? I may not be able to get behind a mic and sing out loud, but I can always escape. To the dwelling of my heart and the residing of the Holy Spirit and sing from within while I'm in a 
foreign land. The people say, if I forget you, O Jerusalem, let my right hand forget its skill, because they played the harp. If I do not remember you, let my tongue cling, cling to the roof of my mouth, let me go mute. If I do not exalt Jerusalem above my chief joy, while I'm in captivity, let me not forget what I'm good at doing. While I'm preaching in a contemporary service, let me not forget that I got Baptist and Pentecostal down on the inside. I cut a step and stick in tongue. I'm not going to forget it. While I'm not where I'm used to be. If I forget you, O Jerusalem, let my right hand forget its skill. If I do not remember you, let my tongue claim the roof of my mouth. If I do not exalt Jerusalem above my chief joy. Their enemies made it seem like God was unable to help them in the midst of their captivity. But even though it looked like to the enemy that God was unable to help, God told you to believe a long time ago to be still and let me fight your battle. Amen. Sometimes you don't have to say nothing. Sometimes you don't have to do nothing. You let God fight for you. In fact, my mind goes back to the third chapter of Daniel. And Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were in the fiery furnace. And King Nebuchadnezzar says, I thought I threw in three, but yes, I see four. They threw them in bound, but they're walking around free. It doesn't matter what you're going through when Christ is in the midst of your situation. Mm. Whatever you're in doesn't have to consume you. You don't have to smell like what you're going through. And you can still come out on the other side. As I close, my encouragement for us today is that while you may be in captivity, sitting in a place where you don't feel like singing, because those that's requesting you to sing will use it against you. You may not sing out loud to satisfy their evil desire. But if you get like Paul and Silas in a midnight hour, you can sing and pray. And God will just shake your situation until the prison doors come open. And that which has you bound will set you free. Yeah. Hold on to your song. Gracious God, we thank you today for what our eyes have seen, what our ears have heard. We pray that you would give us the strength to sing in the midst of captivity. Let us not lose sight. Let us not forget to remember you when the odds are against us. When things on the news depress us. When life seems to have failed us. That you alone have the power to do exceeding abundantly above all that we are able to ask of things. And because of that, we love you today. And we continue to put our trust and our faith into your hand. And if there's anybody here today, under the sound of my voice, that has not accepted you as their personal Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, may they do so today right where they are. Search their hearts. And if you're here today sitting in that seat during this prayer and you want to make Jesus Christ your personal Lord and Savior, just on the inside and say, Lord, 
I'm sorry. The wrong I've done for the wrong I am. I want to be saved. I believe that you were born in a virgin. That you talk at a young age. That you grew up, healed the sick, raised the dead, gave sight to the blind. You weren't taken seriously by those in the church. And you gave yourself over to be crucified. You were killed, you were buried, but on the third day, you got up with all power in your hand. Lord, I believe that story because I profess today accepted and allowed me to be saved. And if you pray that prayer in your heart, right here at this very moment, God heard your prayer and you are saved. Lord, we thank you for all that you have done, will do, and are doing right now. We will continue to remember and sing our song in a strange land. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.